All right, morning, everyone. Morning. Thank you for making it in this cold weather. Mm. If there's, <coughs> sorry, if there's anyone new, we welcome you. We'll look into connecting with you after the service. For now, can we stand and worship? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Morning, church. Yeah, we are more than three. It says when two or more or three are guarded. So we are more than three and we are going to worship. God is adding into our worship team. And today we've got Kumbi. Um, I don't know if anyone has seen on the group. Uh, Zolani did introduce him as well as Paul. So today he will be leading us in worship. Can we give him a warm welcome, please? Hallelujah. We're going to worship him today. Even the weather is somehow cold. Hallelujah. Makanaka Jesu Makanaka Jesu Simudaru oko Rako chiti Makanaka Jesu Makanaka Makanaka Jesu Jesu makanaka, makanaka Jesu. Si mudaru oko, wako uchiti. Makanaka Jesu. Jesu makanaka, makanaka Jesu. Jesu makanaka, makanaka Jesu. Simuta, Simuta, Ruoko, Woko, Chiti, Makanaka, Jesu. Oh, you are awesome, oh God. You are awesome, oh God. You are awesome. You are awesome, oh God. As we lift, as we lift our heads oh, in adoration. Awesome, oh God, you are awesome, Jesus. You are awesome, oh God, you are awesome, you are awesome, oh God. As we lift our heads in adoration, you are awesome, oh God, just so makanaka, makanaka, Jesus. Tell him how awesome he is in your life today. Yes, Hallelujah. In your own words, in your own understanding, he's done so much for you this whole week. So just give him thanks, just give him praise in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your good, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, to 
Jesus, I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust in me, His presence daily. All to Jesus, all to Jesus.
Father, we thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Jesus.
you are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here looking in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light of the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light of the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship.
love you, Father. I thank you. I thank you for the gift of life. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the gift of salvation, you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, I thank you. You have we known me. You have you chosen me. You have predestined me, Father, before I was in my mother's womb, as the Bible says. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. You have loved me before the foundation of the world, Lord. You knew me. You knew me, Father. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. I praise your name, Lord. I thank you for everything, Lord. I thank you for this day. Speak to us. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to us, oh, Father, this very day, Lord. In Jesus' name, oh, Father, I thank you. Too. One more come to you all. Thank you for making it in this cold weather. Warm welcome. I think not warm to the body, but warm in the spirit. Warm in the spirit. Amen. <laughs> I have a few announcements to make. Um, I think the first one is regarding the Sunday school. Like how Zolana announced last week, there's a quite a lot of people in the Sunday school, lots of kids. So we are starting a feeding roster for the kids in the Sunday school. So the main thing that is required is serving and, prepar and preparation of, of the food. And we also need people who can contribute. If you want to contribute anything regarding the stuff that the kids are going to eat, please speak to Zolani. He'll give you yes, more on that. And also from the 1st of August, if you see commotion happening, relax. There's a school that will be here from the 1st of August. We'll be letting out a school, and the school specializes with special needs. So there's going to be a couple of kids who will be running around during the week. So don't be surprised when you see that. And also another important one is we, we need volunteers for sound sounded AV. So I can speak to Judah, KG, and Dev for that. So yeah, I think that's the announcement for now. Can we please pass the baskets before Zolani comes to preach? Lord, we thank you that everything that we have belongs to you. We also thank you that everything that we do not have also belongs to you. So Lord, open our hearts as we give. Open our hearts so we'll be grateful, Lord. So thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, that your blessings overflow and we are able to bless others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mr. Pakati. Can we pray for Zolani before he gives us the word? Lord, we thank you for Zolani. We thank you for his heart. We thank you for his mind. We thank you for the wisdom that you have bestowed upon him. So Lord, I pray that you, you work through him, Lord. That whatever he wants to say is coming from you and we hear it as is, Lord. So we thank you for Zolani. We thank you for the wisdom. We thank you for the brave heart that is God. Bless him and bless his family. Amen. Morning, church. Sabon Amand. <laughs> just, just a really an honor to be able to just stand in this pulpit and share the, the message of the Lord. I will never take that for granted, but I think God is always good all the time. And uh, just able to minister the word of God, it's giving us life. 
and then the ability of knowing that we are not alone. We have someone who's above, who knows our needs. And um, every time when I'm standing in this pulpit, it's always for me to say, we've got another chance again. When we wake up in the morning, I think I always get reminded by my dogs. And fortunately, I wanted to say to you, I know a lot of you think dogs stay inside the house. <laughs> and uh, our dogs does not stay inside the house. They stay outside. We've tried to let them stay inside, but they were just a really a chaos. <laughs> They wanted to go out most of the time, and they would just really cause the havoc. So they like to stay in our veranda. But when we had the, the other flood, other time, definitely they did not manage, and they came inside the house. But whenever I just wake up in the morning, and then just as I open that door, and then see the excitement of those dogs when they see me, and I... It just really blows me away. And I look at it sometimes, I say, you know, how much if someone is so excited like that when they see you, and how much God is excited about you? It just really strikes me a lot in terms of God, he knows you. He cares about you. It doesn't took him by surprise that you've got another chance again in the following day. It's by his grace. And it's by his ability that he can say, here you are. We've actually, last week, it was amazing to know that we've got another chance. God has got another chance over our lives. Uh, we are doing the book of Romans. And we're meant to be actually, I think we're supposed to be done. <laughs> but looks like we haven't finished the book of Romans. We are still going on. And I was reminded at the home group that we actually, I was meant to be doing chapter 11. But fortunately, I actually prepared chapter 12. <laughs> and then um, I was not going to go back to chapter 11. And then when I went back to chapter 11, I said, Leslie, this amazing job. <laughs> so I phoned Trevor. I said, Trevor, next week, can you do chapter 11 and then unpack the other chapter, because for me, that was a very complicated chapter. <laughs> and Trevor said, yes, of course, I'll do the justice. So today, I wanted to let you know that we'll be looking at Romans chapter 12. And then by we're going to be looking at the scriptures in the passages. But before I start to go through the scriptures, I've got actually a three stories. When I was reading this scripture, God actually reminded me this thing. These three stories, and some of you have had this story before, but uh, some of you, you don't know the story. So if you had the story before, please bear in mind with me. But I felt God actually asking me to share this story with you to kind of know where I am going. But this chapter 12, it reminded me that we have a faith in God. Every time when I've read that, our faith, even Romans, the book of Romans, Apostle Paul is actually telling us that we have to have renewed minds, and our renewing minds does not come from the human being, but it comes from himself. So where we can be able to live the life that we are called to be as the human being in this life. So, and I've had this story, actually, I thought, let me share it with the church, because it really touched me a lot. So this guy was sharing about... When it was looting, guys, do you remember that? It was a really a terrible time. And then there was a chaos. When we wake up in the morning, we're thinking, what happened to the human being? What happened to the people that are the people that we should be looking around and say, are they becoming animals or whatever? And I remember sitting at my house I had a little bantam, a, a baki, a small bantam, and there were just guys coming around and asking me to drive that bantam to go and collect the stuff in waterfall. And um, it came to the degree that I have to hide that bantam behind because the guys, they were forcing me to go there. 
And because I'm a coward person, I think that is only save me not to do it. But there was the enemy speaking to me over and over and said, they are doing it, it's normal. Nothing, okay, look at that. It's like you're getting a free fridge. <laughs> and they actually, the enemy keeps speaking to me, the, the food, you're running out to the food, where are you going to get the food? But I stand firm because I know where the source comes from. The word of God actually convinced me that was wrong what those guys they were doing. And I did not go. And but as we remember that time, I think everybody, when we go to the shop, there was nothing. You had to buy an expensive can of baked beans that you never bought in your life before because you want something to eat. There was a queue to go to the petrol station. Long queues just to get the petrol. But as I reminded someone telling that story about that long queue of going to the petrol station, there's something that the Lord spoke to me. And then that person was sharing this story. It really strikes me. He said, there was a queue of cars waiting for that big truck that brings the petrol to the station. And it used to be escorted by the other guys. And then when it was there, everybody, they were very excited for that truck. Everybody, they were happy because they can get the petrol from that big truck going to pour out that petrol. But what actually strikes me, they were not excited for that truck. They were excited for themselves so they can be fulfilled. They were not looking at what the truck is bringing, but they were looking for something for themselves. And as the truck left, and they can fill up the petrol, they forget about the truck. They don't think about the truck. But I wanted to say something to you. The truck did not care that they forget about it because the truck knows the source where it comes from. The source is behind where it's going to go and fill up again, so, and then it can go somewhere else around. So I wanted to say to you, church, Sometimes we must not actually be discouraged when we're helping other people and then when we're asking them, how can I help you? And then they, if they turn your back and say, okay, we don't want to help you or anything, but your help does not come from the people, your help comes from God. As it goes back to that depot again, it go and refill, so it's going to another station to help other people. And as the word of the Lord to you guys, your source is not going to be in human being, but your source it will be in Christ alone himself. He is the one that will fulfill you again so you can be able to help others there. He is the one that will renew your mind so you can be able to help others. And most of the time, as a human being, we are looking to get the energy from people, but it's not going to sustain us anyway. The energy we get is from God himself. Whenever we go back to him, and he will actually refill us so we can have that ability to change life again. Our lives by ourselves, it's not going to be just us doing this. It's all about him and God. We partner with him. And I remember again, as I shared that other story, I said, if you had that story, I remember I went to PE. And when I went to PE, we were given the quiet time to go and just pray out in the beach. And when we were going to pray in the beach, everything was just quiet. Nothing was there. And I remember praying. I said, God, if you are there, would you show up yourself? And I sit at a few minutes, and when I look at my eyes into that beach, there was a big whale came up like that and split off the water. And then it just went inside. And there was dolphin popping up, popping up, popping up. And then immediately, I said, sometimes you don't know what is happening under the ground. 
at the top of the surface, you're thinking nothing going on, but God is at work even at the bottom there. And that's where sometimes we needed to have faith in God. We needed to trust him when we don't even see the things. God is still at work. God is moving whenever we don't see him. So today, I want it, as we're looking at this scripture, that you must have faith in God. And the title of my message today, that God changed lives. As we look at it, he's the one that's changing lives. When I got down in Stockville, the first thing that I pray about it, Lord, let not be me changing the life, but let it be you, God, changing life. Among at my family, I always pray, Lord, let not be me the one that's changing life, but let you be the one that's changing life. And I want us to look around as we're going to just look at the verses and just diving into these scriptures. And I'll just take verse by verse and just really unpacking it, what I felt the Lord is saying. But according to Apostle Paul, he's actually just giving us the guidance and the practical life of living the life that is journey of changing. Sometimes we are struggling with change in our lives. Nobody likes change. And I know, but I think when we look at chapter 12, it actually, it's all about that Paul is giving us something that can be sustainable for our lives so we can actually not be the same again, but we can be able to have a genuine of knowing who God is in our life. We sang in this morning. I don't know how many of us, when we sang that, I surrender. Do you surrender because you are surrendering, but you're not surrendering everything to God? God, I can surrender this thing, but I don't want to surrender this. I am the same person sometimes like, I wanted to surrender what suits me, but I don't want it to surrender everything. Actually, in Matthew, it says, cast out all your beddings to him. And sometimes we want to give him these beddings, but these beddings, we want to keep them. Because we're thinking, Lord, I can handle this. I wanted to say to you, when you said, cast out all your beddings, he's saying everything that is in you, that you must give it to him. Nothing. You cannot surrender what it feels like. You can surrender everything that he asks you to surrender. It's to lay your life for him so he can be glorified. That's what it calls us to do, especially in this chapter, to say, I wanted to give it all to you, God, because you are a big God. And I, I used to ram, like this song. It says, God is good, but he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world on his hands. So when he says that, that means he's actually he's got it all covered. There's nothing that took him by surprise. And I just wanted to read Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And when I was looking at this and I was grasping it, I said, Lord, what do you want to say here? It says in the NIV version, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. I just want to pray. Lord Jesus, as we hear in the scriptures, Lord, let us not just be the people that hear the scriptures, but not be the doers of the word as well. Lord, would you speak to us as we hear your word? Lord, we wanted to hear what you have to say, not what Zolan have to say. Holy Spirit, I invite you today to move among us. In Jesus' name. Amen. I look at the word, I urge you. What does it mean? Paul, when he says, I urge you, is actually 
asking. He's begging. For me, it was kind of a thing that it kind of, Paul is actually giving a direction to say, would you please, this is urgent to me, would you just really, I want you to do this for me because this is what I'm calling to you. So if I said, I urge you, brothers and sisters, for today, so to actually to say, surrender our life to God. That what he was kind of coming up into the scripture to say, hey, listen, we are called to surrender our life fully to God and realize this is mercy and grace to in our life. That what, as he started in the scripture, to actually come and say that this body that we have, it's a body that we know this is all for him. It's all Everything that we do, the bread that we bread, it's actually for his glory. It's by mercy for us that we are able to wake up in this morning. It's not about us, but it's actually for us to actually surrender it all and say, Lord, it's your mercy and it's all about you, Lord. And when I look around sometimes, when you look at many people and when you're talking to the young people, they're always thinking, this human body, it's them. It belongs to you. It's, but I always said, it, it's all created by God. God, in the beginning, he actually gave bread to you. That means it's all about him. Sometimes we're able to know it's not about us, but it's about him. It's for you to say, I surrender for him. And that's what Paul was edging and says, in the view of God, we wanted you to surrender. We wanted you to be able to say, hey, my Lord, I want to truly worship you. Hey, my Lord, I wanted to confirm and know that I wanted to offer my life as a living sacrifice. I wanted to be able to just pour out who am I into you. And I, I'm still struggling about that. And in our life, it's always difficult to actually say this mortal body, as Jonathan used to say, this is going to be nothing at the end. It's going to go to the ground. And then, but to try to maintain this, it's so difficult. But in, when you trust in God, God knows how to maintain this body. And some of us, we are sick. Some of us, it's very tough. But we know that whenever we come to him and say, Lord, you have created me. And whatever my thinking and whatever my thought, you have know it all. So I wanted to surrender and give it to you. And I like the support of that scripture, which is Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Once you said yes to Jesus, that means you no longer live, but Christ lives in you. This is all about for the glory of Christ now. And the support of that said, the love I now live in the body, I have faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave him for me. It just completely strikes me. Just from that scripture, from Romans chapter 1, that means there was a body that was already the sacrifice for me and you so we can have a life to live again. That is Jesus Christ that died for each and every one of us here. It was done. It was finished in the cross. And it sometimes we tend to forget that it was finished, it was done. So for me and for you, so we can have a life of giving him the glory. If we go to Romans chapter 2, it's all about renewing of the minds. Our minds have been attacked by the enemy. We wanted to be able to fulfill ourselves with the word of God again. And it says in Romans chapter 2, 
do not be confirmed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind, that you will be able to test and approve what God's will is good and pleasing and perfect. Transformation starts with renewing of your minds and rejecting the things of the world. We are always, we are called to seek God with the will by allowing the thoughts and the beliefs of the truth. So when we renew our minds with the truth of God, we are not the same again. We, we tend to live a better life because we're able to take out all this junk that we receive from the world. And actually, I always say in the morning, I like to renew my mind with the word of God because I know all the garbage, the enemy, what he speaks to me, I always declare. I remember when he had the temptation, he says that by the word it says. And when the, you've actually been renewed by the word, you became not the same person again. But that means God lives in you because you have a better renewed mind in your life. And I know the first thing the enemy wants to attack is your mind. The first thing wanted to do, the enemy, is to kill your mind. And I know, I always look at it, it's not just the heart moment, but it wanted to have those thoughts because how bad you are on what other people they are. The enemy wanted to change that mind. And the mind is very difficult to transform it, guys. But when we know we have God in us, when we know the word of God, it actually can be very easy. We are we, renewing our minds. It actually allows us to discern as well the word of God. We're able to kind of hearing in terms of what God is saying to us. On that backup of the scriptures, I like Paul when he, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, he says, Finally, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is loving, whatever is adorable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about such things. It's just helping us that we needed to be the people that when we leave this place, you wanted to ask yourself, is, have I filled my mind with something that I know from the Lord? Have I filled myself with the lie of the enemy? But I wanted to replace those things with the word of God so you not be the same again. I've actually come to have a challenge every time when the enemy trying to speak to me that you are not good enough. You are not right. You will never go anywhere. You will never succeed. And I've been chatting to a few people in Stockville. Some of the people say, we will never have a better life because the place where we are living. I said, it all comes by the lies of the enemy. But it wanted to be renewing of your mind and speak life over your life. You're becoming what you are saying, but you can change by what you are thinking of. I always challenge myself. And John Wimble says that, even you are not such a great person, but whatever you are doing it, you are not doing it for a man, but you are doing it for God. You must keep reminding yourself and reminding your mind that it's not for Amanda. It's not for Steve, but it's for God. And recently, I like Angus. He said something that strikes me. He said, I can have a squeaky voice, but a squeaky voice, if it's not for the people around, I can have a squeaky voice for God himself. I can squeaky for him so he can be glorified. Romans chapter 12, verse 3 to 8. It's about serving others with humility. 
serving others with humility. We serve others because of no return. We don't want anything that would be beneficial for us. It's to give it freely because it was given freely to you as well. Sometimes we always want something in return. I want to say to you, church, whatever you do, you are doing it for him to be glorified. You are here to serve others so the kingdom can expand. When I look at that, it really strikes me, and I remember that how many people out there they are looking to be saved, but we actually tend to save ourselves first, then able to say, I can be able to save others. We think for ourselves before we do anything. And it just strikes me other times when I, I was feeding the dogs, I've been trying to learn something where it's quite very interesting. They are not patient enough when I'm saving them. So I've been saying, can we do some prayer? <laughs> can I pray with you? And then I sit them down and try to pray with them. And they look at me as I'm serving them at the end. They don't like the prayer position. <laughs> they just want to be saved. They just want to be saved. And I've been saying, God, can we take that moment and say, Lord, as God says, I'll do what my father told me to do. Whatever I am serving, I am serving for the people and I must be patient enough that knowing that it's all about you. It's all about you so to be glorified. And we have different gifts according to the, the grace. And I know when you look around, some of us here, you have a gift of preaching. You have a gift of prophesying. There's so much gift among us here. And I always say that some people, they are happy for me to tell me to stand in the pulpit and preach and hours and hours, you're actually wasting my time. But I always say, I'm happy, I can preach and I can minister to people. But when you tell me to go out and spread the word of God to other people, you put me in my happy moment. But for those gift, they are all for the body so we can be able people to know Christ. Those gifts, they're giving us the ability. I always have, I cannot, I remember we used to go and minister with Alan Blackman at a Hillcrest Hospital, so I had to be a worship pastor there. <laughs> I had to actually sing. I'm telling you, people, they were putting hands up in the worship. I don't know, maybe they did not like my voice. <laughs> they were putting hands, they were worshiping. I had to do it for him to be glorified. If I had to prophesy, I have to do it for him to be glorified. If I have to teach, I have to do it. But everyone and each and everyone sitting here, and I'm praying these days, I say, Lord, would you please give me the gift of laying hands and praying for the people that are sick. And but... In these days, God has spoken to me and said, you're asking for that gift, but you only just pray for five or six people. I want you to pray for a thousand people, and then you can see. Don't give up yet. But I urge you, church, we must use whatever those gifts we have to serve God. And we must look at it around. Wherever we go, whatever we're doing, it's for his glory. It's not about us. It's about changing lives. So if you look at Romans chapter 12, it's all about renewing of the mind. It's all about changing lives. It's actually Apostle Paul is telling us that we must have a changed life. And where we can go about, it's all where we all going to surrender and give it all to him. And it's 
It's not easy. But when we know we have Christ, who is the center of us, we will definitely surrender. Before I landed here, I've wrote these conclusions about Romans chapter 12. We are actually reminded, chapter 12, it's a roadmap for a transformation. By surrendering our life to God and renewing our minds and serving others with humility. We can witness the power of God working through us to change life. May we be encouraged to live out these principles daily and experiencing the transformation, power of God's love in our lives and the lives of others around us. I want to urge you, we've got the work to do. We are called to be transformed so we can transform others. We are called to have a changed mindset so we can be able to know that it's all about God. I don't know, but in this morning to you, if you have anything that you have in surrender to God, I just want it, we can have a worship team coming and singing that song, I surrender. Surrender to God again. But again, if anything, the enemy has came into your mind and told you lies and said, this is how bad you are. And I wanted to pray with you that you can have a renew, renewal of the mind and that you have been loved by God. You have been loved by God. God knows you. And even when you look at around in this world, first of all, he said, let's not be copying the patterns of this world. But we can be the people that can bring change into this world. I want to pray over that in our Gilead area, that we can bring change. I want to pray over that in South Africa, that we can bring change. Whenever when your colleagues or your teammates talks about how bad it is country, and then sometimes we tend to copy the pattern of this world, we complain about load shading, we say all sorts of things. I've learned into this morning. I say, Lord, thank you for who you are. Thank you that I have a warm house to go and stay on. Thank you, Jesus, for the fresh meal that I eat every day. And Psalms 23, I like it, says, even if I'm walking through to the shell of the darkness, but the Lord is there. And he will actually lead us, not into temptation, but to give us a better life. So I wanted to Let's actually dive into the word. Let's be that track that goes back to the depot to be fulfilled, but we can be the track that will be filled with the word of God. And let's take away the lies of the enemy. I just want to pray over you in this morning. Holy Spirit, would you speak to us? Jesus, we need you. We can't do this thing by ourselves. We surrender to you, Lord Jesus. Right now, I pray, I don't know everybody here, but I pray, Lord, if our minds have been stolen by the enemy. So in Jesus' name, I pray that we can see you in a better way. We can be able to we transform. Lord, we, we give our lives and our body to you and say, Lord, it's all yours. We give our life to you. 
And Lord, we said, have your way. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I just want to surrender anything that maybe you've been struggling in this week. Maybe even today as I'm sharing, maybe you are struggling with. Lord, I, I come for a repentance right now. Repentance is to turn away and not to come back. So I repent. Lord, if we have done anything wrong in you, so I ask for forgiveness in Jesus' name. We love you, Lord. Let us all just worship him and, and sing. Thank you, Jesus.
you, Lord, that we surrender all. Lord, I just pray for everyone here as we live this place, Lord, that we are not the same again. And Lord, we just pray as the week ahead of us, Lord, we just pray that we can just, the power of letting it go and let you be God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. A quick announcement that I completely forget. It's Jonathan and Jade anniversary. And we're going down, Amanda, we're going down on the 15th. Um, so I just felt it's going to be very good if, if, if you don't know Jonathan or Jade, if you know them, I'll, I'll really be happy if you can just write the encouragement messages, verses or scriptures, write them in the white piece of paper. I've got the old, old frame that we're going to put the pictures of them and the, the pictures of the church, and then we're just going to make it nicely and just deliver it to them with a couple of chocolate, just to say thank you for the work that they have done. And I think sometimes we tend to forget there are people that walk this journey, you know. We needed to encourage them with the words of knowledge. If you don't know Jonathan and Jade, they're actually the people that really say that they're in the party that we can meet here. And so please, if you, during the week, send them those messages to me, and I'm going down there and then just going to be nice to celebrate with, with them, their anniversary. He says that after the anniversary and his birthday, he's going to die. Let's see what's going to <laughs> I don't know. It's going to, it's going to happen. Yeah. But I, I think he made it. I think he's going to make it again. So <laughs> bless you. Bye. Bless you. Thank you.